Hughes, and my piece is called Canaries in a Coal Mine. When I first talked to Tracy, um, we were talking bluebirds because I've been seeing less and less bluebirds over the years. But it might be that the bluebirds go somewhere else and I'm just not there. I mean, I'm a guy out taking photographs, I'm not a scientist. Um, so initially it was going to be bluebirds, and I even considered making a giant bluebird, because the last time I made a giant fish. <laughs> and after talking with Tracy and Eric, I started thinking family, and uh, so the family history worked its way in, and it just was like one of those moments, oh, I should do canary cages. My father was a coal miner, and my grandfather before him was a coal miner. And... Uh, in Wales, back in the 19, my dad was 10 years old in 1917, working in a coal mine. And uh, I think the little kids might have been in charge of the canary. I don't know if that's true. I know, I know they helped with the animals and they had to crawl through the tight spaces that the adults couldn't get through. And my dad was trapped in the mine when he was 10 years old. So, but uh, thankfully my dad got out of the mines when he was 17, I guess. So, and uh, eventually made his way to Canada. And he did work in the mines here for a while. They, they raise canaries because a canary could save your life. And they loved their canaries. <laughs> They didn't want their canaries going in the mine any more than they wanted their kids going in the mine, probably. It, that family loved all animals. They brought home all the strays and, you know, so that was passed on. We're animal lovers. I don't even eat birds. I, I'm not really a straight line person <laughs> or a measurer. I like to freeform things. Um, so I actually um, found these, these, the wooden pieces are um, frames I found at a thrift store for um, needlepoint. So I managed to put them together and then some of the bars, they're from recycled chopsticks to I found some doweling in the thrift store. One of them has metal pieces from a politician sign that was left in the ground after the plastic part blew away. So I've got some metal in there and some of the downed fen fencing from farmers, which I also think is not nice for the wildlife. Um, and um, yeah, it was sort of fun. Like I love the fact that Tracy inspires me to try something new. So once I got the first one done, then I was kind of on to it. And then <clears throat> there was one that looked like this, that was metal, that was a little more elaborate, because I think generally in the coal mines they were sort of basic, but um, so that sort of inspired that, and that's made from an old film canister and some wire. Um, and they've all got, uh, newsprint on their bases, as bird cages would, that's uh, aluminum uh, tintypes from old newspaper when they used to print off of tintypes. It was a photo-based show. <laughs> I got caught up in making the, <laughs> the cages. Um, well, I'm always photographing. All these photos were taken before the show, um, so they were specifically for the show. First of all, I printed the photos on a um, presentation paper so that it could absorb the beeswax. Um, yeah, and I cut the photo out, not completely finished, and glued it on. <laughs> glued it on. I had spray glue glued it onto the aluminum, and then I cut it out cut the aluminum out. It's very thin aluminum. I could cut it with scissors even. So, um, and that was fun. I realized I love cutting. I love scissors and cutting things. <laughs> uh, it was just exciting that it worked. And all these years, why hadn't I figured this out sooner? 
I collect things um, if I see something interesting, just like a photo, if I see something interesting, I pick it up. And, well, I pick a lot of plastic up just because I don't think it should float down the river <laughs> to Vancouver. Um, and that's also family history. I remember walking with my parents way back in the 50s and we picked up garbage. And there wasn't garbage then. Now, but, you know, yeah. Um, and my dad had a thing for rusty metal. He never did it, anything with it, but he liked it. Maybe, I don't know. So I, I've made things out of rusty metal. And um, it's one of those things, uh, part of it was I couldn't afford regular art supplies. I mean, I started off painting, like most people probably, and I love painting, but uh, it's expensive. And um, there's a history in the arts of working with bound materials, you know. So that was fairly easy. And uh, I think it also gives instantly the piece has got history and, you know, there, it brings more to it. My giant fish that was in the last show it was just the shape of one of the shovels that gave me the idea for a fish's mouth. Now I know other people thought it looked like something else as well, but I saw a fish. And then I realized I could probably put it together and, and make a fish. And, and the fact that the shovels for that piece came from a, a pulp mill right on the fish's territory. Now that pulp mill I don't think has done anything bad to it, but, but you know, the relationship to forestry and fishing I thought was uh, significant. And um, so I, I like it when, when there's, you know, all kinds of other elements that go along. Like I was thrilled when I realized, oh, there's white swan toilet paper. And, you know, that, that only relates to the COVID thing, but, you know, stuff like that. I grew, I've lived for quite a while near the Adams River, Salmon Run, which is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the most amazing things that I've ever seen in my life. But I've also noticed less and less salmon. So the first creature I put in the cage was a salmon. And then it, you know, ties into the fact that fish farms, you know, so there's a double meaning there. But so the salmon to me is like a canary. It's telling us that something is wrong. And uh, so then it went from there, you know, to bees. People are worried about the bees. I also. I'm a huge fan of trumpeter swans, and um, I also think that's one of the most amazing phenomenons to witness um, their migration. And Kamloops just happens to be a stop-off spot, so I get to see lots there. But I've heard their numbers were, were up, although from my experience, there were less this year, but again, they could be somewhere else on the day that I'm not there, you know, that, I, that I'm there. But uh, they represent birds. Like I thought, I'm gonna do air, water, mammals. I'm the mammal. <laughs> well, I guess, you know, the, the cow, I feel bad for factory animals. So it's just all creatures that I think are in distress because of humans. I first of all love this building. It's a beautiful building and I just find it a kind, gentle community, supportive. Like it reminds me of my early days in Vancouver when the community was you know, just small and it was very supportive and, and a lot of fun. So there's a lot of fun here too. Um, 
And being a part of a group show, like I'm looking at this piece over here that I would love to buy. I don't know if I could afford it, but um, no, it's other artists inspire you. So I mean, when you look around and see like how creative the, the pictures on the fridge door, like I just love it. And you know, I have friends that have had dog sleds. It's a beautiful image, you know. I, I love this place and I love the people. And I'm so grateful that they found Kate because <laughs> I love Tracy and Eric and, <laughs> and Dolores and, and everyone else connected with the place. But no, it's just, it doesn't feel like, well, it feels homey, I guess. It's great. 